Okay, in this interview, Cassie is interviewing Karen Spiller, a prominent feminist and editor of Ms. Magazine. The topic is, what reproductive rights do men have? Let's roll the clip. So, talking about reproductive rights, right. uh, women have made a lot of advances and, and progress. Men's rights activists feel like they have virtually no reproductive rights. Do you think they do? Sure they do. Uh, men have the right to take responsibility for contraception and birth control, and then if uh, if they have uh, fathered a child, uh, taking responsibility for that child's upbringing. Uh, this whole fight on reproductive rights right now is definitely, there's no question it's part of the backlash. Okay, so 55 seconds in, her answer is, men have the right to use contraception and taking responsibility for the child's upbringing. Now, the whole fight on reproductive rights is part of the backlash. So this is a very common um, tactic that people like Spiller, um, prominent feminists use to pivot on this particular topic. So the question was about men's reproductive rights. You're going to notice that the pivot begins 54 seconds into this nine and a half minute uh, interview. But let's, let's just see where this goes. If you think about it, and actually I was at a United Nations conference and heard a woman from um, uh, Brazil talking about the fight in her country for reproductive rights for women and for girls. And there the Catholic Church has tremendous influence on government policy making and on the laws that are made. Uh, the Catholic Church. And uh, of course, uh, not only is abortion illegal, uh, but birth control is illegal. And she said, uh, she was talking about the current issues in the feminist movement there, and it was all about uh, reproductive rights, having access to contraception, having access to safe abortion and reproductive health care. Okay, so now that the pivot's complete, she has now focused on reproductive rights for women. So the original question is completely dodged. Um, Brazilian women were having rights to contraception understood. I don't know the laws there and in fact that could be correct. She doesn't present any facts to back that up but she does say that a woman in Brazil once told her so um, in her mind I imagine that that amounts to facts but maybe there are facts to back it up. If you know of any please feel free to share them in the low bar. Um, but it appears that in her mind women's rights involve access while men's rights involve responsibility. There's the difference in the distinction she's beginning to draw. Uh, so my question is, what responsibilities do women have? How did the conversation change from men's reproductive rights to women's reproductive rights? And um, equality, from my understanding, is uh, the objective of the feminist movement. I mean, when you look up any definition of feminism, they talk about creating equality between the sexes. That's fair, and I don't have an argument against that. Um, but if that's the case, then why pivot away from speaking about men's reproductive rights if we care about equality? Why not discuss the rights of both sexes if equality is the goal of feminists like Spiller? Let's keep watching. And she was apologetic. She said, we're, um, we're consumed by these issues because it is how women reach autonomy. And I knew this intellectually, but hearing it from her mouth, I was struck again by how central having control over your own fertility is to your own sense of self and uh, well-being and free agency. If you Okay. Having a sense of autonomy, a sense of self, and a sense of free agency, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. In fact, that's something that all people have, should have, excuse me, men and women. Both deserve to have these. So I don't have an argument with her on that point. Let's keep rolling the clip. You are constantly impregnated against your will. In a marriage, out of a marriage, doesn't matter. You have very little control over your life because you're responsible for 
the upbringing of children and your okay constant impregnation or being constantly impregnated outside of your will okay this is a lead up to their rape culture fear mongering talking point uh, that all men are evil and are all potential rapists fear mongering message uh, what message does this demonization of men and boys send to your boys are you incapable of raising boys with moral values who know right from wrong um, if so wouldn't the parents be partly to blame including the mothers of these boys you're responsible for their health and their care and their education and their feeding um, okay I'm sorry I have to stop this again responsible for the care health and well-being of children okay last I checked and I'm a parent both parents share those responsibilities the inference here that she is making is that men impregnate women en masse and then abandon them now if this is the case again where are the stats or the facts to back this up I mean as the editor of a feminist magazine and this is a key talking point uh, for feminists shouldn't she be able to rhyme off the statistics from the top of her head and provide references even if they are not specifically accurate shouldn't she be able to give you a percentage of uh, of marriages that break up where the men impregnate women and just leave en masse I find it kind of odd that she doesn't provide any facts at all but let's just keep see what she says right now and so having the ability to decide if you'll ever have children and how many and under what conditions and when is powerful it's very powerful because it makes a woman a full human being able to make her own decisions and to control her own destiny and patriarchy depends on uh, men being able to control that in women okay patriarchy was eventually going to come up because that's the boogeyman uh, so this mythical monster that can't clearly be defined um, implies that men live in a free, carefree life with no obligations, making babies everywhere and then abandoning them. Okay, again, we see no statistics to back that up. Okay, so my question is this. If men live such carefree lives, maybe she can, she can explain why men make up four in five suicides, 80% of the homeless, 97% of workplace deaths, workplace deaths, excuse me, 100% of the selective service, 99% of wartime deaths, and live five years less than women to name just a few of the wonderful benefits of being a man. Is she saying that she wants to have her fair share of those statistics? And that is what the fight is over. Uh, now then, of course, those most opposed to abortion rights and access to abortion, access even to birth control. We're not in a fight in this country, again, that we thought we had, the movement generally thought was over in the 1960s, and it's the fight to access contraception. That's the fight now we're in, in addition to keeping abortion uh, safe and accessible and legal. Well, men know this, um, and so, Access to birth control, access to uh, abortion has always been something they have struggled throughout all of history to control. Okay, here is where it gets really deep. The fight to access or to prevent access to contraception. Now, there are countless women doctors that write up prescriptions every day and countless women pharmacists that fill those prescriptions every day. So. My question is, where are the men that are controlling all of this? Um, now, the Trump administration just recently uh, mentioned that they're po poised to issue a ruling unwinding an Obama-era requirement that employee health benefits include contraception. While this doesn't make contraception difficult to get, it would have been easier if that is not going to get rolled back. But I'm pretty sure that condoms and vasectomies are not covered today. They never were. This just means that the cost is an out-of-pocket expense, just as it was before the Obama era requirement. Now, if we're taking, talking specifically about abortion, yes, there are fundamental ideological differences between the pro-life versus pro-choice camps. 
But it isn't a men versus women issue. It's historically been a conservative versus progressive conversation. Last I checked, there were men and women in both ideological camps. Are there fundamental battles over abortion? Absolutely there are. But lumping that in with contraception as a whole, like IUDs and the pill, is just plain misdirection and hyperbole. IUDs and the pill are available and have been for decades. Abortion truthfully does remain a divisive topic, but that is not preventing women from access to contraception. Access to IUDs, the pill, condoms, and vasectomies is available in every U.S. state and every Canadian province. If there is a fight, she hasn't demonstrated what that fight happens to be. Now, women are always going to have the control of that. And women will do whatever it takes to control it, including um, give up their own lives. Okay. Women will give up their own lives to control this. Now, here is where I'm a little confused. A minute ago, they had no control. Now, they're committing suicide. So, my question is... Does this happen? I'm sure it does. But the absence of numbers to back it up with context leaves the listener, like you and I, to fill in the blank, to think that this is a pandemic. When you put that out there, is it 1% of the population? Is it 50% of the population? The number would matter. If it was 50% of the population, it would be a pandemic. If it's 1% of the population, it's a problem. But is it a pandemic? I wouldn't call it a pandemic. Some people might. I wouldn't. Um... So my question then is this, if it is, fair enough, let's understand it and solve it. Give us the statistics, if it's that big, the statistics should be easy to pull, legislation should be easy to create, and who in their right minds would oppose it? Women will uh, seek a back alley abortion, women will self-induce abortion, whatever it takes to control her fertility and she will do it uh, no matter what, even if it means her own life. Um, and uh, that's how determined females around the world are, to have the control. Without that control, your life is uh, a gamble. Your life is a gamble. And you, uh, you, if you have too many children, you will be poor, you will not be able to invest in them properly. And women especially who are, who are raising children on their own face economic discrimination in the workplace, um, and they're doing everything they can just to keep it together. So, Okay, so if I stop this every time Spiller said something that was utterly ridiculous, this would be a one-hour show, so I'm going to keep this short. But the original question was about men's reproductive rights. Her non-answer lasted 48 seconds. We are now four and a half minutes into her response. The rest of her answer here has nothing to do with the question Cassie asked to begin with. So what Spiller did was to avoid answering the question directly by pivoting to the talking point she really wanted to talk about. She either never had given thought to that question, which would be odd for someone who's so interested in equality, or she couldn't care less. I'll leave it to you to decide which one it happens to be. So without that control, um, you have ceded uh, your, uh, your autonomy to, to uh, whoever can impregnate you. So it's very central. It always has been, and it's why, uh, as part of the backlash, there is this effort to, again, make abortion inaccessible, illegal, uh, to keep contraception and birth control away from women. and. Um, but women aren't going back. That's all there is to it. Absolutely. <laughs> MRAs feel like if women have the right to choose, pro-choice, mm -hmm. if the women have the right to choose to have an abortion, then men should also have a right, some kind of right to choose whether or not to be a father. And so they feel like, okay, well, if a woman can choose to have an abortion or keep the baby, if she keeps the baby, well, first of all, if she has an abortion, say he wanted the baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's just no getting Well, he should that. have thought of that early on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have to stop it here. So Cassie tries ever so delicately and very politely to bring Spiller back to the original question by rephrasing it. Her answer is, he should have thought of that early on. 
Interesting that nowhere in her response does she mention anything positive about having and building a family. What about women who want to raise families? Are they defective women in her mind? Uh, a simple question led to a non-response with a message of female oppression and fear-mongering. It's become common now for women who want to have and raise families, especially starting later in life, to discover that the men are bailing on marriage altogether. Men have been turning away from marriage in droves in the last five to ten years, and that trend is steadily growing. Let's see what else she has to say. Uh, that should be a discussion between a man and a woman before you're faced with an unintended, unplanned pregnancy, and in her case, an unwanted pregnancy. So if you're going to be having sex uh, that could result in pregnancy, and you haven't had this conversation, with the woman that you're having sex with. You better have it, you better have it fast. What happens if uh, birth control fails? What happens if you're not using birth control or contraception? Um, so you better have that conversation up front. That's when the man has the ability to make decisions, uh, either not to engage in sex or to use uh, condoms and to use other forms of contraception. So that's where his role comes in. Once he's impregnated her, she's the one now faced with continuing a pregnancy, faced with the health risks that accompany pregnancy, uh, and over a, over a third of all pregnancies, even in the United States, have complications and problems for her. Uh, and ultimately, he can walk away, and she has to worry about how to feed and clothe and educate and care for and raise another human being. And all too frequently, men do walk away. Just walk away. Okay. <laughs> Ultimately, he can walk away. All too frequently, he can just walk away. Now, I don't know what universe Spiller is living in, but the reality is this. Clearly, she either has no concept of child support laws and how easily it is to garnish a man's wages with or without DNA evidence, incidentally, um, that he's even the father. I mean, it's called paternity fraud. As many as one in three fathers are raising children that they don't know are not related to them. Now, family law has made it a point to discourage and in many cases penalize a man who walks away. Again, no facts to back up her opinion, but I'll give you a couple here. 60% of marriages end in divorce. 70% of divorces are initiated by the woman. Last I checked, 70% is more than half the time. In essence, this would be my definition of all too often. So, how are the men walking away all too often when 70% of divorces are initiated by the woman? I, those stats don't add up to me, but let's see what else she has to say. So, his rights have to be um, exercised early before a decision is made. And they better be making the decision together. They better have agreed that a conception is what they're willing to risk or that that's what they want. Um, but once she's pregnant, uh, all decisions must be hers because ultimately um, she is the most impacted. There's okay. His rights have to be exercised early, and they better have agreed. Uh, according to Spillar, his rights have a time limit and require her approval before he can exercise them. So essentially, if his rights are subject to her approval, then by definition, they're not rights. They're permissions, and they're discretionary, and they're based on her discretion. So she either doesn't understand what the word rights happens to mean in this context, or she is decided not to acknowledge them in that context. So, her rights, on the other hand, have no time limit and are solely up to her. His approval is not required. These are rights. So in her mind, essentially, only women should have rights. In case you weren't paying attention, this is her answer to the original question that Cassie asked. There's just no question, and she ultimately has the responsibility for that child. So the men's rights act activists want, uh, they're pushing an initiative to have 
a consent form that is signed once the baby is born. So say the woman decides to keep the baby, MRAs feel like they should not be enslaved to 18 years of child support if they would have wanted to have an abortion. So they feel once the baby is born, they could si sign away their responsibilities to the child where they have no financial responsibility to take care of that child. Well, see, this is where they should have had this conversation early on and made a decision. If they're going to engage in sexual intercourse that could result in a pregnancy, they better have thought all that through. That's where their uh, role comes in. Um, once there's been uh, a conception and a pregnancy is carried to term, they have a responsibility because they, they participated equally in the creation of that. Um, so it's too late then. <laughs> Here's a contradiction. Less than 60 seconds ago, women alone were solely responsible for the children and all the decisions and actions associated with raising them. Once the topic of a consent form comes up that concedes full control, including financial responsibility, to the mother, allowing her to exercise her free agency, her tune changes without skipping a beat. Apparently, money is the only value a father brings to the table according to Spiller. The key to decrypt the glaring contradictions here in her statements is one word, it's money. For them to claim they have a right to walk away, although they do walk away, you know, hey, they do it all the time. Um, so I don't know what they're so worried about. What they're really worried about is that they have to take responsibility um, and that they can't just uh, engage in sexual intercourse with anyone they want to at any time and, and not bear any responsibility for contraception, uh, any responsibility for the outcome. I mean, there's no question that sexual intercourse leads to pregnancy. So think about that. And where is it that a man can have total control over what happens? It's on the front end of that. He can prevent pregnancy. He can prevent pregnancy or he can agree to a pregnancy and to being a responsible parent. Uh, that's where his decisions come in. <laughs> Essentially, according to Spiller, men have no rights or should have no rights. And she's made that abundantly clear in her response. Okay, I'll let this play through to the end. There's just a few more seconds. And there we go. So, um, I am always interested in what your thoughts are. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, either are great. Uh, I believe in critical thinking and uh, looking forward to your feedback below. Enjoyed the show? Like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for joining us in The Man Cave.